Greg Ehrenberg here with Adam Schur, and it's a holiday edition of the NBA Injury Report, Martin Luther King Day. Do us a favor, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Unfortunately, the way the slates break up, it's kind of un not ideal for what I would have liked to have seen from a holiday slate. I think it would have been really cool if we had a Christmas-type slate, which is all these games included on FanDuel and DraftKings. Not really the case, though, and we don't have that many games to talk about, but there are some interesting injury situations for us to hit on here, Adam, and some players, key players, coming back from injury. Starting with CJ McCollum from the Portland Trailblazers, we have had this situation with Portland. Where there's been so many guys that have been out that we've just kind of been playing whoever's been active. Anthony Simons expecting a lot of usage to go to him. Sometimes some other cheap guys. Norman Powell, he's questionable to return. But how does CJ McCollum being back while Damian Lillard is still out, how does that impact everything else going on with Portland? So I'm not entirely sure like what I think there. So I, I think that if McCollum starts, then it's a bigger deal um, because that would signal, I think, that he's going to play more minutes than if he comes off the bench. I'm expecting that he's at least somewhat limited. Like he's been out for a while. It was a collapsed lung. Um, it, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that he's just going to come back and play 40. But if he comes off the bench, I still think it's likely that Simons is playing a lot of minutes. If he starts, I think that it's bad for Simons, but then Powell is also a question mark. Like if Powell's in and McCollum is starting and let's say he's limited to like 30 minutes, then it becomes really difficult to get to much of anything on Portland because you have McCollum taking a bunch of the usage, playing enough minutes that, you know, it's not like Simons needs to go play 36. But if Powell's out, then I would still think that Simons is playing a pretty big role, especially, you know, obviously even bigger if the, the more restricted McCollum is. Yeah, and that's something else, too, that there, there's still some other variables to consider here. Is McCollum going to be restricted? Is he going to start? Is he going to come off the bench? Is Norman Powell going to be in? Certain guys on the team like Yusuf Nurkic, Anthony Simons, they could be greatly impacted by McCollum being back. If McCollum plays and starts and has no restriction, do you see yourself getting to him in DFS when he hasn't played since December 4th? I mean, if he has no restriction, like if that's actually announced, then yes. I mean, it's a good matchup against Orlando. He's playing without Damian Lillard. The rates should be there. I have no idea, you know, how effective he would be. But I also just still have a hard time thinking that that's going to be the case. Even if you get like CJ McCollum's going to be limited to 30 minutes at 8,500, it's probably going to be pretty tough to get there. If it's less than that, I think it becomes really, really difficult. And the next thing we have to talk about, it's a somewhat similar situation where Bam Adebayo, he has not played for a very extended period of time, injured his thumb. It was a UCL injury. He ended up having surgery on it. He has not played in quite some time. He's questionable to return. Assuming he is back in the mix, what do you expect from him and how does that impact other players on the heat? Yeah, I mean, if he's back, then I assume that's sending your seven back to the bench, which would make it pretty impossible to play him at 6,800. Um, it. The, the fact that it's a thumb injury for Adebayo, like I would think, I, I think it's still likely he ends up being limited just because he hasn't played since the end of November. But if I had to guess between him and McCollum, like which one is less likely to be limited, I would assume it's Adebayo. Um, so, I mean, if we get a report that he's just good to go, then at 7,800, I think he's a decent option. Um, but I think most likely it just ends up kind of being a similar situation where it takes your at seven out of play. It makes PJ Tucker look less appealing. Not that PJ Tucker ever looks <laughs> that appealing, um, but that chances are it's going to be difficult to get that about to get that a bio as well. The NBA injury report is sponsored by Yahoo daily fantasy sports. If you guys are new to Yahoo, click on the link in the description box below, head on over to Yahoo, make a deposit, enter a contest. You get one free month of Osmo plus platinum. We have all the tools you need to make money at DFS ownership projections, player projections, player rankings, and so much more. Stop guessing, start winning, join Osmo plus today. And uh, like I was saying, there aren't that many injuries to talk about, just given the way that this slate has been broken up into a bunch of smaller slates that we're recording in the afternoon. So a bunch of these games have already been uh, already underway or about to start. But the final one to hit on in the later slate of games, DeAndre Ayton is questionable to play. And we've seen a whole bunch of situations for the Suns this year when Ayton has been out. But now we also have JaVale McGee is active. So the last time Ayton was out, we were seeing Jalen Smith as a go-to guy. How do you anticipate the center minutes would shake up for the Suns if Aiton is out today? My assumption is that McGee would start. I don't know for sure. I mean, they could certainly go to, to Jalen Smith. But uh, for what we've seen for most of the season, I would expect if Aiton's out, that McGee's getting the start, that Smith's playing behind him. At 3,700, I think at this point, everyone knows to just get McGee into your lineups uh, if he's starting. 
Yeah, which I think is a total, totally reasonable way to look at it. Something else to consider. Cameron Johnson is questionable, which eliminates the possibility if, if he's out for the Suns to play smaller ball lineups. This year for JaVale McGee, 21.7 minutes per game as a starter in 10 starts, averaging 27.6 DraftKings points. That is going to do it for us today, guys. Do us a favor, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If anything changes on the injury report today, leave us a comment below. Ask a question about anything we did not hit on in this video. Other than that, good luck and enjoy the holiday.